Hello everyone, this is Jesse. Screen name Cobia48. This is my top bar beehive. And my brother wanted to know how I approach my hives, so I'm gonna show the best way that I know that I approach my hives. So here we go. I'll have all your tools ready, your smoker ready. Good white smoke, you want cold smoke, you don't want hot smoke. You'll put a puff or two at the door for the guard bees. These can smell very good. So they Oh, look at that roach right there. See, they coexist with a lot of different other, other things. And what I'll do is I'll separate a bar. I lift it up slightly, and you'll put a little smoke, just a couple puffs, and you let it sit there and aerate. Look at that big roach. Isn't it pretty? That's a pretty roach. I hate a roach. Oh, did you see the ant? <clears throat> You don't have to use your smoker a lot. Just a little bit. Always move low, slow movement. When the top bar be hived, you have to hold the bar a certain way. Big ants. This hive was infested with small hive beetles for a long time. See that? That's only a couple days worth of work of comb. I made this hive myself. Let me see if I can get you good shots. Okay. There's nectar in there, which will then be evaporated and turned to and then capped off, turned to honey, right there, I don't know if you can see it. There's larva in there, it's like three day larva, three day old larva. If you're gonna graft queens, that's the best time to do it. With the top bar beehive, you always want to hold them like this, with the center of gravity. This, you can turn them, and up like this. You cannot sideways like this. If you are, and you got a big one, you can hold it, and I'll show you in a minute, and you can hold it like this, but it's not recommended, especially on hot days. You don't want to mess with them. I'll take two bars out. I'll slide them over to give me room to work. And you don't want to ro roll these, so you can just nudge it, get them out of the way. You got every bee you kill is one that doesn't produce for you. Remember, it takes a bee 5,000 flowers to make one teaspoon of honey. And for top bar beehives, it takes, they make more comb than honey, and it takes six times as much effort to make. You hold it like this, you can turn it, you hold it like this, any which way with the center of gravity, because it holds it this way, it's strong that way, but you cannot tilt it. The only way if you're going to tilt it, is you'll put your hand like this on the other side, the back side, slightly, where you don't hurt bees, and then you can do this. But when you do that, nectar does fall out of it. Now, he wanted to know something, how I put more in here and more frames where they'll fill the frames up. What I do is I will actually go in between two frames that already are full in the brood's nest and I will add a fr empty frame 
like this. I'll empty an uh, empty bar because these ain't frames. And you don't have to have this here. You can just dip a, uh, a string in wax and put it there. The only thing that really matters is the width of this. That's the only thing that matters. If not, they'll start cross combing on you. And when cross combing happens, what happens is they'll comb this way so you won't be able to pick it up. You'll only be able to pick it. I put a comb in here not too long ago. I put a comb. See, I'm not even using my smoker. But I have it. Better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Remember, when you open your hives, these are about like weather like you like. If it's a crappy day, it's going to be a crappy day. For you, once you open the hive, you don't do that. Okay, beautiful. I think there's a couple things I can show you. Okay. Here is the center screen larva, capped larva. There's one in the center and it's not capped yet, you can see it. And then this is drone brood. Uh, it's larva too, basically, but you can see it, it's, it protrudes out further. And what that is, is drone brood is males. Let me see one male. I saw them a minute ago. There's a male on here. Uh, remember, your hive, there's only 10 or 20% uh, males in the hive, and them are drones. The others are all females. Look at that right there. See the top of there? See them? Just checking her out. Okay, let me see the male. He must have flew off. But you have nectar there. Drone brood. Regular brood. And uncapped brood. Oh, and that was a frame I put in there about a week and a half ago. I put this frame in here. In between two large frames, that was um, this bar. Excuse me. In front, in between two. If it wasn't filled out, you can do it with bars too. I mean, with uh, the Langstroth hives, which are the square hives. See, I spent. I've only spent sixty dollars on my bees. Other than bolts and stuff for my legs and my legs of them. I caught my swarm. I built my hive. The sixty dollars that I'm talking about was just my bee suit, which I didn't have a bee suit when I first caught them, so that was fun. And I had to open up my hive today to make sure I don't have any trying to swarm. And um, I'll find, I'll show you a queen cell right now. It's not, um, hmm, it's not got a queen in it, but it's that large one. They love to do it right at the edge, anywhere. They'll do it anywhere. If they're queenless, they'll do any larva that is right, ripe for it. And see how they got chewed on that? Let me see. They'll start chewing on that. And cleaning it off, polishing it where they can create queens once they get large enough. Now what happens when they swarm, the queen, they're too large for the box they're in. And they start, she will get half of the uh, workers and herself and she'll leave. She'll usually fill out queen cells and she'll leave before they happens. Now this is just a tendency to expand nature. You be very careful with them. You don't even have to you don't even need this bell. I don't even need this bell. I'm moving a little bit quick. Don't be in a rush. It's the worst thing you can do.
now this is a wonderful frame because I have a queen. I can show you this beautiful queen. Okay. You will be able to pick her out quick. See her? She's much bigger. You'll be looking at drones and thinking, oh, I found the queen. No. Once you see a queen, you'll know. You'll never, uh, you'll never think anything else. You, you won't think a drone or anything is the queen. And she, see how shiny she is? She's a little older queen. Uh, when they're not, they're, the only ones that are hard to hard to find are the ones that are not pregnant. The ones that are not fertile, they have smaller abdomens, but they're just this. The period, period is only, the ants are just terrible, the bull ants, or some kind of ant. I come in here and there's spiders, all kind of things in here that coexist with it. Another queen cell. It's kind of hard to see in the queen cells when you got a veil on. You don't know much about bees you should always wear protection half the time I don't even come out here with a suit my suits high water on me they don't even I don't know if you can see it they don't even go all the way down I'm six foot one or two and I got a large I needed an extra large I got it like Chinese people or something <laughs> little little people I guess I don't know it's probably where it come from because it was a cheap cheap and I always love using Amazon or uh, wish it takes a while to get here but it's always cheap and it's not promoting anyone but that's just what I use now this is another one that I put here last week and they've drawn it that much. Now they won't always draw it that much. The more you can sugar feed them and promote them to be in a more in a more um, comb building mood or mode. But I was just filling my hive back because I had a bad year last year. Oops! You try not to do that. See that that dropping that slightly shakes them and then they they get real mad they're not mad now i don't know why but sometimes they they're all right with it wasn't many bees on that either and see I'm, I'm not using my smoke if they do get out of hand you always keep your smoker you should always try to keep it on a little bit better You'll use cold smoke. So basically you don't blow a lot of hot and then you can just do a little bit of smoke like this to push them down. But I work slow so I usually don't even use my smoker. I do like to keep it on though because I like a little smoke in the air. It helps a lot. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, I know that they're they're big, so a hive like this, you should check them at least once every two weeks, and it takes around 20 minutes, maybe. And, uh, I mean, you can rush if you want. You don't have to. But my brother was having trouble with approaching these hives and that's the only reason
only reason I was making this video because I've had bees for three years. I got one hive and I split that hive into five hives. Last year it rained so much it pulled all the flowers off of the off of everything, basically. So there wasn't a big nectar flow. And then And uh, they just, they got weak and then skull face moth, well wax moth, got in there. The larva bore through the comb. They bore through it just everywhere and they can't lay their, they can't lay their larva or anything in there. They really tear up your hive and they also, they lay, the moth will lay larva on there and just, and everything prey on them when they're weak. I do not use anything, any poisons, anything to uh, keep the uh, the small hive beetles in bay. You can use diatomaceous earth in a a bee trap. You can make them out of a CD case or something, or. Or you can make, a, or you can just buy one, like five bucks. But you can diatomaceous earth is a, basically minerals. You can get a tractor supply. It's like a wormer. You can feed it to your dogs, cows, anything. You could eat it. And that's why I use basically a beetle, it gets into their joints and they can't clean it out. So it basically it like saws them in half. They can't clean their joints and then then they get caught. Now I see a couple couple um queen cells at the bottom. But that's from old. I don't even take mine out. When they start polishing them, you'll know. Check this out. I wonder if I can hold her. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Let's see. Now this is a newbie. Where's she at? There she is. This is a newbie. I know it's pretty close since she's hatched because, or emerged from her cell because she's white. The darker they are, the older they get, or the older they are, and the shinier. The shinier on their back, uh, it's from other ones uh, chewing on them, um, just going through in and out of your queen reducer. I mean. The queen excluder if you have one. Now she'll sit here and she's a nurse bee they call it because she's new. She'll clean and she'll clean and she will feed the larva that's not capped yet. Ants are everywhere. See, I'm in my flip flops. You don't. Look at this. Here's a full frame of cap through, almost fully capped. This queen's doing good. 
when you see this just not missed anything like that one's missed you know you have a very good queen if it's more like this you'll know uh, she's she's having problems or that could have been they had nectar in it or pollen or something in there where she couldn't lay in there but if it's solid you know you have a good queen if it's not so solid more further in between you may want to replace that queen if you can if it's the only queen I would but if it's early in the year and you can split the hive I would split it and get a couple different queen cells and basically kill that queen or kill it if you don't have one already replaced it because anything can happen but Here's a drone. Hmm. Drone is the biggest one right there. You see him? He's right there. That big one. Doesn't look anything like a queen, does it? Here's a good comb. This is another comb that I put in between two other combs because I don't buy wax foundation or anything. When you buy wax foundation, if you don't get it, you don't know where it's from. So usually everyone they all they put chemicals in their hive, and you don't need to put chemicals in your hive to survive. I've had these for three years without a drop. I have substitute fed them, but that's it. Now, if you're gonna make comb honey, this is the type of comb you want. You want it white. You don't want it any other color. Now, we got pollen in there. If you can see it. <laughs> Move. The pollen there, yellow and looks like a green pollen. They're telling what they got. But when they fill these out, these combs, let me get right here. Usually they'll start in two different places. They'll start at three sometimes, but two different places. Then they meet these up, they join them up, and then they'll they'll fill it out, whatever the, whatever the edge of the, the box is. They avoid connecting it to the bottom. They will connect it on the sides uh, if they need the strength. Uh, in the honey bars they won't in the brood's nest they don't need as heavy you get I think these can get to nine pounds of honey I don't have a lot of honey in here because it's early in the year but if you have a lot of honey you uh, you work slow with it you don't want to uh, hurt them. Now this dark, dark comb, that's old comb. That's like two years old comb. The older the comb, the more basically paper it is instead of uh, actual wax. It'll basically eat that wax away. Mm, now let's see what we're seeing. Pollen baskets. See little pollen baskets? What they'll do is They'll go get pollen, and that's what they could make bee bread out of. And they'll put it in. That, that, that girl right there will kick it off into a cell. And then go get some more. Honey, whatever they're doing. Or nectar, whatever they're doing. And then... Then... A bee will come by. A, a girl bee. She'll come by with her head and pack it in there and this is the usually the last one they'll draw out if it's between where they're working they'll be like hey there's a spot here it needs filling so I'm basically going to keep that there and put an empty one
and then they hopefully they'll fill it. Now I made all these bars out of just regular wood. Oops. See that would have made them mad, but I've been easy with them for the whole time. So they do not like poking at them. You can grab, you can grab grass, and you can do it like this, and pull them away. And it usually don't make them mad if you do it lightly. See that right there, what she's doing? She's sitting there and she's guarding. <clears throat> now if you want to, like I said, the, the comb, you, you got the brood's nest right here. You can throw one right slap in the middle of two full combs and they'll build right in the center of that because they like to keep things in line. And I believe that's all. I hope y'all enjoyed. I highly recommend everyone to get into bees. That wants to help the environment. You should never get into bees for anything other than that. Uh, no, never for money. You should always do it for other reasons. Uh, you can always make money off of it. It could be a side job, but. That's a byproduct. You should never go in there just for that. But I hope y'all enjoy. And I'll see y'all later.